What is going on guys, DBG here, and this is the final top 100. Because I forgot, well not forgot, because it took me so long to get this done, obviously Ty released his, you guys want to watch me react to that first. This is the final one. Because it took me so long, I went through the effort, I put a counter in a lance. And because this is going to be a really long video, I do apologize if there are a couple of like, one to two second breaks in between it's uh it's one of those situations where it's like it's an extra like two hours of editing and rendering and everything in terms of file sizes to cut out a little bit of dead space and i don't want this video to be up any later than it already is because it's already way too late so 100 number 100 i mean just just because just because we got Yuda at number 100, lads. Is he the 100 best player in the game? No. Is he in the top 500 best players in the game? No. But he has to any list. Like this video, not that many people are going to watch this video. People are going to come back to this video for reference in, in a couple of years time. Like one of my most viewed videos every month is still my top 100 list from the end of last year. So I have to. You can I cannot. I put the I'm pretty sure I put Dean Wade 100 last year. For reference, I gotta put Yuda in here. So now, at number 99, we have got Jalen Suggs. This right here, this is a card where he's mostly next gen made. But Jalen Suggs, you might think, oh, he's only a 6-4 point card. He basically, it was between him and Dwayne Wade. It was between him and Dwayne Wade, and I went with Suggs, because I prefer Suggs. Stats-wise, basically perfect. Basically perfect badges-wise. He's got Exum base with a really nice Trey Burke upper. He's got the Pro 3 behind back, Pro 2 um, size up and escape. And he's just like mini Luka Doncic. He is literally like mini Invincible Luka. So for that reason, I have him at 99. But again, there are a ton of guys that um, you could put in here. Like, there's a, there's a good possibility your favorite player isn't on this list. And there's a good possibility that, for example, he is your favorite player. I wouldn't be surprised because again, you can see it right here. Basically, every stat that matters is 95 plus. Every card is perfect stats and badges, and it all depends on what animations you like. And you better believe I like X and Base. At number 98, we have got a bit of an old card. A bit of an old card. We got Josh Smith. We got Josh Smith in here at 98. 91 three ball, 94 speed, 95 primary defense, basically every defensive badge, at least on gold. 96 driving dunk, and he's got John Wall release. His upper, a lot of people don't like his upper. I don't I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Like, I like shooting with Kiki Vandeweghe. I like shooting with Josh Smith. Pro one behind the back. And this guy is still, he's still at a good enough level that you could run him and be fine. Like, if you run him in my team right now, and, like, you could be fine. There's no guarantee. Like, there's no guarantee that you're going to like this card. But he's still more than more than capable of holding his own. Let's be real. I could make a second 100 list, and all 200 players could hold their own on my team right now. At number 97, we got another Galaxy Opal, and it's Jonathan Isaac. So Jonathan Isaac, 97, 99 defense overall. He's so he's way better in next gen than current gen. Great speed, insane length, really nice release in base 70. He's got all the key Hall of Fame badges. And again, the fact like I remember on Ty's list, I think Ty had him at number 100, and I was shocked he was at number 100. But no, that's just how many great cards there are. Like, there are so many guys that don't even make this list. And number 96 is another one that initially I thought, no, nah, no way this guy is number 96. But the more I think about it, the more I think, like, you know what? Cade Cunningham at 96 makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. He's got base 98. The literal only problem with him is he's got two cold zones. I'm not the that high on Cade Cunningham on next gen. I'm going to say that right now. Like, I don't think he's... I think that Ben Simmons upper is really, really weird on next gen. I don't know what it is about it. But for me, he wouldn't even be Hito Turkoglu level. Or sorry, not even Ben. Sorry, the better version of this guy wouldn't be Hito Turkoglu. But this card right here. He's still... Everything except dunking is really good. And again, if you're going to be using a base 98 cent or a point guard, you're probably three hunting with him anyway. He obviously doesn't have half Showtime or Posterizer. You're probably shooting a lot of shots. K Cunningham's nice. He's definitely the best of all these opals without question okay cunning is actually really good at 95 we got a bit of a weird one this is for the next gen guys out there 
We got Clyde the Glide Drexler. Like, I was tempted to put Dean Wade on this list. I really was. Because, basically, for one reason. For this, for the, they're both here for the same reason. Base 5. My, well, probably my favorite release in the game. And upper 84 is such a nice upper. It is such a nice upper. Pro 2, Pro 3. 92 3 ball, 97 speed. 96 ladder quickness, 98 driving dunk. If you're looking at the badges, he doesn't have at least on gold. Like, yeah, maybe you could get away with boxes. It doesn't matter too much for a 2 guard because he's still athletic. Um, great shooter. And again, his green bad or sorry, his gold badges. Trying to think, is there any of these that really matter? I mean, maybe you want Lanka Breaker on gold, but he's again, he's got basically perfect stats. Great release for me, and I think he deserves his spot at 95 on the list. Number 94, we got John Collins. For one reason and one reason only, Kobe Base. Kobe Base. This is quality. This is absolutely quality base. And like, I put him here. But uh, there are a lot of Kobe card, Kobe based cards that could you could easily put that didn't make this list. Like Wes Unseld was so close. I I was so close to picking Wes Unseld. Um, Zion Williamson in my initial draft was number one hundred. His invincible before I've had to put in Yuta. Um, those guys with that Kobe base were all really really good. And again, John Collins in here at number ninety four. Kobe base upper seventy. Same shot as far as I'm aware as. Wes on sale, six foot nine, perfect stats, perfect badges. Handles elite, can curry slide on next gen. Unfortunately, he's a little bit too heavy to curry slide on current gen, but he's a really good card. And he feels way bigger than six foot nine. He feels like 6'10, 6 6'11. 6 then we have got Yijian Lian. So, um, I don't know what, what did I do just there? Okay. I do not know what I did just there. But Iji Anlian is coming in at number 93. He's a 7 foot tall 2 guard. Is he good on next gen? No, he absolutely sucks on next gen. Is he unbelievably good on current gen? Yeah, he's pretty damn good on current gen. You could still use him and be super successful. He's like better Jonathan Isaac on current gen. And he can play it too. So he's fantastic. He's not very good on next gen though, by the way. He's really not very good on next gen. Then at number 92, we have got Jalen Rose. The man who thought that DeAndre Ayton should be, uh, the man who co-demanded, who demanded on national TV DeAndre Ayton may, was picked for the US Olympic team. Despite the fact that DeAndre Ayton has represented the Bahamas. And uh, as far as I'm aware, yeah, they, once you represent one country, you can't switch. That's why Cat isn't, can't represent America. <laughs> but uh, he demanded it. He went out. He went out hard. He went out hard, demanding that uh, he made the team. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a, a bit of a bad look for him. But 96 uh, speed, 96 acceleration, 94 three ball, 90 driving dunk, 93 lateral quickness. Um, he's incredible. 6 8 point guard. I really like that base 32 release, lefty release. Pro 2, Pro 3, Pro 8 crossover. He's a fantastic, fantastic player. Jalen Rose really is good. And then at number 91, we got Sean Elliott. It's weird. I'm not quite as high on Sean Elliott as Ty is, despite the fact that he's next-gen made, more than likely, like because he does have hot blinders. 6'8", with a long wingspan. Really good release in base 28. I say base 29. There's just something about Sean Elliott that I don't like. I liked his diamond more than I like this card. I've used this card a few times, and I actually had more success with his diamond. But that was for a different time. Every shooting badge, basically every defense badge, Pro 2, Pro 3, base 29, upper 56, which is... Elgin Baylor upper, which is not the greatest upper. I will say that much. That is an off-putting upper. But still, he shoots the ball. He's got a good length. He deserves his spot in here at 91. And number 90. Number 90, 89, and 88 are all Magic Johnson. So we're going to go 90, 89, 88. I'm sorry. Where's Invincible Magic? Invincible Magic, 88. So, the re I've gone Magic a couple of spots higher. But I mean, they all do the same thing. They really all do the same thing. Magic Johnson, he's perfect at everything except the jump shot. He moves so fast. So fast on next gen. He's good on current gen as well. Everything except the jump shot. If they didn't patch the post hooks with Magic, especially on current gen, he would have been insane. He would have been absolutely, absolutely insane lads if they did not patch the post hooks on current gen because he was his pink diamond with the half deep hooks 
which is super OP. Then at number 87, we got this guy's next gen mate, by the way. Uh, Alan Houston, but on next gen, he's incredible. On next gen, he's like equal, if not better, than Corey Kispert. Like 47 halves doesn't seem like a lot, and only four goals. Dude's got Ray Allen, Clay Thompson, which is the exact same jump shot as Corey Kispert. He's got Pro 2, Pro 3, 97 3 ball, and half blinders. He's like slightly worse Kisper, but he's got half blinders. Like Alan Houston is next is an incredible next gen player. Like he's as good at the two as run if you're running invincible. He's almost as good as if you're on invincible Luka Doncic. Alan Houston is incredibly, incredibly good in this game. And he's in here at number 87. At number 86, we have got Hakeem Invincible. Is he that different than the other Dark Matter? Not really. He's a little bit better. Again, Hakeem just gets the best post animations. I don't know what it is. Like, Hakeem bodies people in the post. He gets some of the best rebounding animations. And he has every year. Hakeem's always been a bully inside just because of the animations. Hakeem, Shaq. I don't think who gets diff really just different bully ball animations. I was like, Wilt gets really good lane, lane steal animations. But Hakeem gets bully ball animations. Shaq gets bully ball. And he even saw it in 250k. Like, Hakeem was bullying people. Obviously, Hakeem didn't give you the same offense as what AD or Moses Malone. But Hakeem used to just bully Moses Malone in 250. I think Ewing gets those animations as well. Ewing stinks, but Ewing does get the bully ball animations. Shaq gets them, Hakeem gets them. David Robinson used to get them, and then for some reason his player bill got way skinnier this year. Um, and that's really it. But Hakeem and Shaq, they've got the two best rebounds, or they've got the two best animations in terms of just getting a uh, position in the post. So at number 86, we have or number 85, we've got Hondo. We've got John Havlicek, Hondo, right here, at number 85. Hondo is like, Hondo represents, let's be real, Hondo represents Dwayne Wade, the Van Ardales. He represents those guys, the undersized base 98 shooters. Like, Hondo, if, if you play, especially on current gen, and Hondo is your favorite player, you can still have success. Like, if you're out right here running Hondo, like, I reckon there are still people. Maybe not nowadays, because Cade, Cade exists. But there are still probably pro on point guards playing this game on current gen that are running Hondo. Like, you can definitely, definitely still get away with him. So he's in here at number 85. Base 98, really good player. And number 84, this might be a bit high. Dino Raja. And I think he's like a slight downgrade on... Chris Stapps, Opal Wiseman, and Pink Dan Bobo. I think Bobo's the best of them. I think he's one of those type of players, but he's a downgrade on all of them. But Dina Raja, what did they do to you, man? His release is good. He's, there's just, I don't know what it is about him. But like, I think his 80 ladder wings doesn't matter on next gen because it's your real ladder wings doesn't mean really mean anything. He only has an 85 driving dunk. Like this, his guard was super OP for his time. I'm shocked. They, they nerfed the hell out of this Dino. And he also came out in what was one of the most disappointing sets we've ever had. And these guys, this was so meh. This set here was so meh. But Dino Raja, he's, he's good, but he's disappointing. And the most disappointing player I've ever used. I'm shocked at how much I don't like this card. It's Pokashevsky. I loved... I, I used to run this Pokashevsky. That was like... Before he even set foot in the NBA, before he became a meme in the NBA, Pokashevsky was a meme on the DBG channel. I used to run this Poku. A Poku was a one of the uh, one of the uh, the DBG the DBG gods. I don't know what's the best way to describe them, but he was like the he's he's like one of the Dean Wade's. The he's he was almost he got overtaken by Yuta basically. He got overtaken by Yuta. But 195 pounds, seven foot tall point guard. His movement was ridiculous. I just could not green with that release. I just couldn't do it. That was the problem. I just could not green with his release. So I did not like Poku. He was God on next gen though, if you knew how to use him. But then we one spot ahead, we got LeBron James. This card has actually become probably the most underrated player in the game. I'm pretty sure, I, not, I'm pretty sure he was not on Ty's top 100. He's not as good as Giannis. Definitely. And I think the biggest problem with him is that why the hell would you run this LeBron James when you could run this LeBron at the two 
or this LeBron at the one or this LeBron at the three. Very few people will be running LeBron at point guard. And if they are, they're running goat LeBron. But this LeBron James right here, he, yes, he comes with LeBron James release. That's okay. It's not Exum, but like it's okay as long as you're not in the corners on current gen. He's not going to be in the corners. The problem is, is that he can only play point guard and center. You're not going to play him center. But uh, this card's really good. This card's still really good. He, is he good enough to make most people's teams at this stage? No. Can he get better guys cheaper? Yeah. Case in point, like Diaz better and cheaper, but he's still good. 81. This one is a bit of a controversial one. Lamelo, Lamelo ball. He moves different. Him and Penny Hardaway. Wait, is Penny on this list? Did I accidentally get rid of Penny? No, no, Penny's there. Him and Penny Hardaway move differently. The only difference is, is that I actually I put Penny way too high. I put Penny way too. I actually no. I think Penny's a little better than this card. I was about to say. No, I was going to say, do I have Penny ahead of Invincible and Mellow? I'm like, no, I don't, actually. So, uh, thankfully. Thankfully, uh, um, I do not have that. But there is only one spot difference. But this guy here is like a slightly worse Penny Hardaway. He, they move differently. I don't know what it is. Again, perfect stats, perfect badges, great release in base 38. The only the only downs, like the only way you can describe it is that he moves a little bit differently. I like Lamelo Ball. And he moves kind of like he did in 2K20. So if you liked him in 20, you like him again. If you didn't like him in 20, you're not going to like him again. It's just the difference is, is that there are so many better point guards this year. Whereas last year when he came out, he really was one of the best point guards in the game. And base 38, as much as I like base 38 this year, it was definitely better last year than it was this year. Base 38 may have been the best release in the game last year. Outside of, like, outside of waiting 98, obviously. Um, then after that, we have got RJ Barrett. We got RJ Barrett. And I have one spot above. We got him at 80. And at one spot above RJ Barrett. Put it in reverse, Terry. Put it in reverse, Terry. It's at Terry Dishinger. What is the difference between these two cards? One of them's right handed, the other is left handed. Um, you got more badges on RJ Barrett. You got a longer wingspan, Terry Dishinger. It's preference. I prefer Terry. You for RJ. That's fine. They're the same card. Literally the same animations. They're copy and paste of each other. One's right-handed, one's left-handed. Um, and then, one spot higher, is the invincible version of these two cards, Dr. J. And number 78. And the 70 half badge. Do I actually think Dr. J is better than the other guys? I don't know, maybe. I don't think you'd notice a difference. I really don't. I think if you ran Dr. J, or you ran those other guys, you would not notice a difference. Dr. J has got every Hall of Fame badge except for Deep Oaks, Drop Stepper, which do not matter. And tight handles, which you'd rather have on gold. And no steady, which is great for current gen. Dr. J, very, very good. Again, all of these guys have Rudy base. You've actually got... You've got a different upper, actually. Is it mellow upper on this one? On these guys? RJ Barrett has... RJ Barrett has mellow upper as well. And Dr. J has got Rudy um, upper, but they're all the other same triple styles. They're the same cards. Three of them are the same cards. Then at number 77, in a bit of a controversial one, we've got Manu Ginobili. I played against some dude actually running Manu that knew how to shoot with him and he was God. If you know what you're doing with Manu Ginobili, this guy is like Luca 2.0. He's got X and base, a weird upper. Like that is a weird upper. I like him run though, which is weird because normally I like left-handed shooters more than right-handed shooters. But for some reason, I actually can use it on run though. And it looks weird on the Joe Ingles or Manu when I tried to use it on them. But he's got Pro 2, Pro 3, Invincible, X and base, 6669 wingspan. Like, this guy... Like he's going to be out quite a bit behind Luka Doncic. But I'm telling you, if you are somebody that does not rely on the upper to time shots, this guy is as good as Luka Doncic. He really is. But that weird upper is what uh, puts him down here at 77. At 76, we got Goat Magic Johnson. Don't ask me why. He just felt a bit better. Again, they're the same card. It's plus It was placebo. Like, I'm always going to say that. It was placebo. Every, like, Invincibles versus Goats. If you prefer to go to the Invincible, unless the only time where really there's a difference is in Kareem's. Because Kareem can curry an next gen, you can't occur it. But, like, they, it is placebo. It is placebo if you think the Goats are better than the Invincibles for anyone not named Kareem abdul -Jabbar. But, um, yeah, Magic Johnson, he's he felt a little bit better. 
Now, I will fully admit it's placebo, but he's still going a little bit higher. Again, the difference between like 88 and 76, though, is in games pretty much nothing. Then at 75, we've got Anthony Davis. I only put the Invincible Anthony Davis in, but the Invincible AD, Space Jam, AD, they're the same card. You're not going to notice a difference. AD, he is better on current than next gen. If you like his release, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine if you like his release. Can't carry. Again, perfect stats, perfect badges. No point even showing them at this stage. Basically, every card, almost every card is perfect from here on out. And, yeah, the only problem is he's that little bit, that little bit short. But, again, if you know what you're doing with AD, he can be a great card. He's just not my favorite. Then, one spot ahead of him, we got small forward Ben Simmons. I'm so high on it. Like, this guy is basically a 10k MT version of the god tier Ben Simmons, the Warp Reality one, on next gen. On current gen, there's a bit of a difference because hot zones matter a lot more on current gen. Because hot zones only, like, they matter a little bit when it comes to greening, but they only, like, they really matter when it comes to hitting whites. Like, if you don't have hot zones, you're not going to hit any whites. But the difference is on next gen, whites go in at a much lower rate than current gen, and it's a lot easier to green. I much prefer next gen shooting. I don't like it how white how so many whites go in now on next gen, but I much prefer next gen shooting because it was basically like it used to feel like 2K20 shooting, but it lasts straight arms. Like the straight arms is a ridiculous thing, 2K20 shooting. But I like I like it being easier to green and less whites going in. I don't like it being harder to green and more whites going in, like the current gen way. I really don't. Maybe that's like that might be better at a competitive level. It really might. But at the end of the day, there are maybe 400 two actually not even 400 there are about 300 player people in the world that play this game competitive game mode competitively there are also about i reckon about five million people in the, four to five million people in the world that play this game so uh i don't think 2k should base the game on the 300 instead of the 4.9999999997 million um yeah but this ben simmons ridiculous he's he's very similar only gold range but i mean this guy he was when i i played i won one game i got beaten in, a, in uh, game three basically i had to leave i assumed i was going to lose after i quit down five in game three against some guy crispy who's one of the best players on next gen in europe got him to a game three and the only reason i got him to a game three is because simmons scored like 35 in game one simmons is god at number 73 this guy is so slept on jalen green 64 halves Seven foot tall wingspan, or seven foot long wingspan, six six. Steph Curry, Paul George, pro three behind the back. Steph Curry base again, every single badge. He's incredible, and one spot ahead of him is literally just preference. It is literally just preference for me. Almost the same card is Rudy Fernandez. So Rudy Fernandez at seventy two. And Jalen Green 73 are the same card. Jalen Green is 11 extra hops. I don't care. For some reason, I prefer Rudy Fernandez. They both have step pace. Both the same dribble sigs. Slightly better stats-wise, Jalen Green. Slightly better bats wise But I don't know. I prefer Rudy Fernandez. So Rudy Fernandez is one higher. But if you want to put Jalen Green one higher, that's fine. Because they are, they are so similar as cards. They really are. And Jalen Green is one of the more slept-on cards in this game. At number 71 to 69 is um, Michael Jordan. So we have got 71 is USA Jordan. Obviously, the other Jordan's not many top 100. 70 is... It depends on your gen. If you are on current gen, Invincible Jordan's better than Goat Jordan. If you are on next gen, Goat Jordan's better than Invincible Jordan. So I'm an next gen player, so I'm just going to put Goat Jordan ahead at number um, 69. But basically, USA Jordan is worse than the other two, and it all depends on what gen you are on for which is which of the two Jordans are better. So I'm just gonna put Go Jordan at 69, and then at number 68 through our number 68 and 67 is Kobe Bryant. And Kobe Bryant, I'm actually have Go Kobe a little bit higher, and I'm going to explain a little bit why. So 68, we got this Kobe Bryant, and at number 67, we got Invincible Kobe. And the difference is, is that I believe that Jordan, I believe that Jordan is probably equally as effective. 
I think Goat Jordan on next gen is equally as effective as Invincible Jordan is on current gen and vice versa. Like Invincible Jordan on next gen is the same effect as Goat Jordan on current gen. However, I personally believe Go or Invincible Kobe is good, but I think Goat Kobe on next gen specifically is so much better than Invincible Kobe is on current gen that like Goat Kobe is one of the best two guys in the game on next gen. So for that reason, like Goat Kobe's in a, I think he's in a different class. On current gen, I would still take the Invincible Kobe over him. But I think on next gen, Go Kobe's in a complete different stratosphere. So, so while we have three Jordans in a row, we, Kobe's going a little bit higher. Then, at number 66, this is a controversial one. And this is where next gen bias comes in. And I don't even care. Like, I don't even care. This is my list. This is my list. This is where my next gen bias is coming in. At number 66, we've got our Vita Sabonis. This guy is incredible. His release is a little bit iffy. I will admit that his release is iffy. But like he play for me, he plays as good as a Dikembe Mutombo. He plays almost as well as a Simvular for me. The only difference is I know he stinks on current gen. So that's why I have him down at 66. But this guy right here, he is the most slept on next gen player. He's so good. And I, I remember saying this in the video yesterday. And I got two or three comments being like, I must be the only person who runs my entire offense through Arvita Sabonis on next gen. I'm telling you, this guy is one of the most underrated players on next gen. He stinks on current gen, which is why he's 66, but he's incredible on next gen. Now we got Darius Miles. Oh my God, did I forget? Did I forget my goat? Oh my God, I didn't put my goat on the list. I didn't put Nick Batum on the list. Oh my God, I didn't put my goat on the list. I'll find somewhere to put him in. Oh, there's nowhere. There's nowhere, lads. There's nowhere. I'm looking through the list. There's nowhere I can fit in Nick, my goat, Nick Batum. So I just realized that Darius Miles versus Nick Batum debate will always be live on. But Darius Miles is ridiculous, by the way. He's absolutely ridiculous. I love this release. If you don't like the release, then that's fair enough. Again, that's the thing with any of these cards. I could put a card number one, and if you don't like the release or you don't like the card, that's perfectly fine because there are... 37 different alternatives at every single position that you can run but sorry Darius Miles is 65 um 65 base 65 for number 65 pro three behind the back he's got 92 three ball 96 lateral 97 driving dunk every defensive badge that matters basically every badge on gold almost every shooting badge this guy has got it all except for one cold zone which is it matters but it's not the biggest deal in the world and his player build his dunking is incredible lads i'm telling you this guy right here is so slept on just because of his dark he's a dark matter or sorry he's a galaxy opal does not mean that he's a bad card and number 64 this guy's super slept on tracy mcgrady i don't know why on next gen give me trey burke release on quick over trey burke release on very quick give me that He's not the greatest on current gen because he's got the steady. He's got every other key badge, at least on gold. 98 three ball, 97 ladder, 99 dunk, 97 speed. He is a perfect next gen card and is really not that much worse than the Invincible. And the fact that you would get him for really cheap is huge as well. So he deserves his buy in a 64. And number 63, we got Penny Hardaway. Penny moves differently. I've explained it with Lamelo. Base 75 that was released, I don't like on next gen and I don't like it on a point guard on current gen. He's still got Pro 2, Pro 3. He's got 99 every stat, basically every badge. And the guy just moves differently. And then we've just got basically um, Penny with a better release in Lamello Ball. We got Lamello Ball. And you know what? You know what? I found somewhere to put in Nick Batum. I'm going to take someone out of my list and I'm going to put Nick Batum. I don't. So Lamello Ball, I've already basically explained. This is the wrong Lamello. It's this Lamello. This Lamello is just slightly better than the other Lamello. And at 61, we got Nick Batum. Because I almost got myself peer pressured into putting in like, this card in 61. Because I didn't notice that I didn't take this guy, this next guy out of my list. This guy's on my last list. And he was really high on it. But he stinks. So Nick Batum's incredible. Nick Batum is the deserving 60, number 61 on the list. He deserves number 61. Base 40, chicken on next gen. Is he next gen made? Yeah. Is there next gen bias? Of course there is. It's my it's my tier list. But he's got half steady, half range, every key badge on Hall of Fame, 90 jump, 94 lateral, 
incredible release, incredible three ball. And he's a million times better than the fraud that I initially had in Nikola Jogic. This guy can't even run. This guy's all right on current gen. I admit it, he's fine. This guy can't even run on next gen. He can't even move. He can't play defense, can't move. This guy is not it on next gen. So Nick Batum, the rightful number 61. And number 60, we got Dirk. I don't like Dirk, but a lot of people do. Again, pro two, pro three, can't carry, he's too heavy. He's got um, 40, or he's got base uh, 94, which is a release that some people love, some people hate it. I'm in the camp that hates it, but I know some people really do like this release, uh, so I'm gonna put Dirk here. He's in the, at the end of the day, he's a seven foot tall invincible with a release that some people love. So that's where he's going. And number 59, we got Chicken Man Weber. Like this guy has nothing wrong with him. He's got nothing wrong with him. I just realized I forgot Bill, um, it's not Bill Russell, Ben Wallace as well. He's a very kind of similar card who I really like. But Chris Webber, 57 halves, 15 golds. I mean, if you're looking at the gold, gold badges, would you rather him have half green machine? Makes no odds. Flexible and Deadeye matter. These are the only two badges that he has on gold that really matter. He's, his stats are essentially perfect. The guy's got pro two, pro three. Um, Kemba release with Rudy Upper, one of my favorite jump shots in the entire game. This guy would easily be top 50, but I know I know I'm higher on him than anyone else. And there's another guy, two spots or one, two spots ahead of him that uh, I prefer, and I just don't want to put him higher because, man, the comment section is already gonna go crazy with me putting Yuda on the list, Suggs on the list putting Rudy Fernandez at 72, putting Sabonis on the list. I don't want it to go even more crazy. So at number 58, we have got Embiid. Idols Embiid. This guy's really good on current gen. His release is really nice on current gen. On next gen, he's pretty decent as well. For me, he plays like a slightly worse to Kambi Matumbo, but he's not bad. He's actually not that far off the Invincible. He really isn't. A really good shot, base 48, Levine upper. He's probably the best upper in the game on next gen. Pro two, pro three. He's, he's a very, very good shooter and a just very solid guard. And number 57 though, my favorite, my shooting guard, Cliff Robinson. This guy right here. Like I am the only person by the way, I think that likes this card. Like I have, I have never played against this card. That's the scary thing is like, I don't play that, like it's not like I play this game like religiously, but this card came out two months ago. I have played against him a grand total of zero times. 95 three ball, 95 dunk, 97 lateral. In my opinion, the best defender in the game. Six foot 10. Yeah, he doesn't have these badges. It does not matter. The guy literally clamps everybody. Waiter is base with that absolutely chicken upper for me. I'm the only, I think I'm the only person in the world that likes his upper. Everyone else hates his release. I think I might be the only person in the world that likes him. Because like for me, Cliff Robinson is a top five two guard, but everyone else hates him. So I'm going to put him in a 57. I'm going to have to bite the bullet. There are battles I want to fight. I will not like, Cliff being a top 20 card is not a hill I'm going to die on, but Cliff being in the top 100 is a hill I'm going to die on. Cliff's incredible. At number 56, we got the Kembe Matumbo. So the Kembe Matumbo's defense is really good. He's one of the best defensive big men in the entire game. Uh, his jumper base four is okay. His speed is good. He can side to side, pro three behind the back. This guy was, it's preference whether you prefer this guy or like a Porzingis or something. I personally prefer the other guys. Um, on current chat, I, think I can see why a lot of people will use Matumbo. And I mean, I still think Matumbo is more than usable right now. He is more than usable right now. At number 55, we've got Ty Debo's favorite player. We got Cam Reddish. So Cam Reddish, again, I have Cam, I have put Cam Reddish over Cliff. Like that should have, that should have been a, that should have been a, um, a requirement after, like it's, it's as good as a requirement after I lost to Cam Reddish. But at the end of the day, I lost to Ty. I reckon there are a hundred cards in this game that Ty could have beat me with by himself. Like, the dude basically did a gameplay on me. He did a Cam Reddish gameplay on me. That was the worst part about that. He basically did a Cam Reddish gameplay on me. And sorry about that. But uh, yeah, Cam, Paul George Bay, six, eight, six, or seven foot wingspan. He has got basically perfect stats, basically perfect badges, and just a great card. And then one spot ahead of him at number 54 is Paul George Dark Matter, who is just slightly better, Cam Reddish. 
Like, he's a couple less Hall of Fame badges, stats a little bit better. He's an inch taller and has a better behind the back Pro 3 versus Pro um, Pro 5. But they're, they're basically the same card. There's its preference. And we got Jawan Howard. We've got Jawan Howard, lads. He has got 89 three ball, 94 speed, 94 acceleration, 95 lateral quickness, 95 driving dunk, half showtime, half flexible release. Again, the 89 three ball is a little bit alarming, but that's his only bad stat. And you can very easily, like if you go and even, you get floor, one player on your team will have floor general. That's up to 93. You, I'm not going to say get D'Antoni because D'Antoni is expensive. You get Frank Vogel, who's cheap, and suddenly that's up at 90, 96. Then you don't even need Grinches. Just get any old three-point shooter that gives you plus three for like 2,000 MT. It's at 99 then. And you can very easily get a plus 10 three-pointer without spent breaking the bank. And you get every defensive badge and Ray Allen base. This is one of the most underrated cards in the game. This really is one of the most underrated cards in the game. And I think I might have been a little bit low putting him in here at number 53. At number 52, we got Chicken Man Jameson. We got Chicken Man Jameson. Him versus Jawan Howard. I mean, if you want to say Jawan Howard's better, that's fine. It literally comes down to do you prefer X and base or do you prefer... Um, do you prefer X and base or do you prefer Ray Allen base? I prefer X and so uh, Antoine Jameson's going one spot ahead. Number 51, we have Go Kobe. Go Kobe's making an appearance. This guy is insane on next gen. He is absolutely insane. 6'6", six, 6'11", six, six, wingspan. Kobe base, Kobe upper. My God, that's one of the easiest to green. Pro 2, Pro 3. Quick dribble star. Every half badge, 99 every stat. Like, if there is ever a GOAT card that I will tell you is worth it over their Invincible, it'll be Kobe. But... I mean, only if you have your MT, because it's still... I mean, the best thing to do MT-wise is to just buy the Kobe Bryant Team USA card. like that's Or even the Gladiator Kobe for less than 10k, if he's still that price. The best option. Starting off at top 50, is Kevin Durant. Team USA KD. 6'10", six, six, 7'4", wingspan. Great, great, great card to 3. Every half badge. He's basically the invincible, but he can't play the two. His release, I actually like it on both gens. Whenever I go back to current gen, I like it, but at the same time, like, I am one of those weird players that, like, because I don't play enough current gen, I'm good with weird releases. Like, for some reason, I'm chicken with um, Carmelo Anthony, on, or not even Carmelo Anthony, uh, base 55, which is basically Carmelo Anthony base in Alex English. For some reason, I'm chicken with that release. Like, that's just a weird one. I'm, but again, I'm not a person to be taking advice on current gen from. Most definitely not. But um, yeah, KD shoots the ball well, really good length. And problem is, is that he's apparently not good on current gen. So uh, he's down here at 50. Number 49. This dude's carried me. This dude has carried me in games. Kispert. He's like a 62 half badge, Allen Houston. 99 three ball. Ray Allen, Clay Thompson, Pro 2, Pro 3, 6'7, six, 6'8 six, wingspan, 90 driving dunk, 97 lateral. I mean, you can debate that this guy right here is better than Invincible Luka Doncic. If you're playing Luka at the 2. If you're playing Luka at the 1, yeah, obviously Luka's better. But if you're playing Luka at the 2, you can debate that he's better. He's just better, Luka. Corey Kispert is ridiculously good. He, every time I use him in any sort of squad builder, the dude carries me. The dude absolutely carries me. And he is, he's probably the player in the draft set that I've had the most success with. I'm not going to say he's better than K because he's not, or he's better than Mobley because he's not. But he's the player that I've had the most success with. Okay. Then this is an interesting one. I'm going Larry Bird. I'm going Larry Bird. Because he's cash. Larry Bird, current gen, is cash. Larry Bird next gen. He doesn't miss. Larry Bird when he's open is one of the best shooters in the game. He is just deceptively good. And like you never see him run. And anytime I come up again or I use Larry Bird, people just leave him wide open because they think Larry sucks and suddenly Larry's just cooked them. Larry is one of the most interesting players. Maybe it's just because on next gen I use this Larry Bird for the longest time. I used to use this Larry Bird a point guard. While I ran Ben Simmons at the three. 
And that worked really well because Ben was my primary ball handler and Larry was my light like, cone. But man, this Larry Bird is good. He is surprising good. And this Larry Bird is the exact same card, by the way. So they, they're the same. So I'm just putting them in the same position. Man, Larry, I think at 48 is where he deserves. Then at number 47, this might be a bit low for some people. It's Invincible Kevin Durant. It's, it's a tough one. But like the difference between him and like Opal PG and the guy I have one spot ahead are so small that it's just preference. Like Invincible KD is incredible. Like he's an, he's an Invincible Kevin Durant. There's not more to say. Then one spot ahead of him is Cedric Maxwell. I got Cedric Maxwell at 40, 46. This guy is so good. On current gen, this is a guy that I can cook with. And you know what's you know what card's good when I can cook with them on current gen. Base three is one of my favorite releases in the game. It doesn't matter which gen it's on. He has a weird, a little bit of a weird hitch on next gen, but I've started to get used to that. He's like a much better version of Denny Abdia. And 64 Hoffs again, like 64 Hoffs is more than three more than Invincible KD. He's got basically 99 every stat, basically every Hall of Fame badge, as well as that base three, which is a great release. Mellow Upper, which is one of the better uppers in the game. Pro two, Pro three quick really good card and he deserves he deserves his spot in here at uh at number 46 at number 45 we have got the man who has what am i talking about ball the man who is better than his song i literally was about to say balling oh lads i'm down bad now I'm really down bad. But this guy is like, he's like better Dino. I still don't believe he's as good as Porzingis or Obo Wiseman, but he's like better Dino. He's got base, he can curry on next gen. He's got base 109 and a decent upper. Pro two, pro three. He's also got like 98 block. And he's just, he's got everything. The guy has got absolutely, absolutely everything in game that you need from center. And he's uh, ultra, ultra long length. If you want, I would play him a power forward and he's going to be exceptional out there. He's one of the best shot blockers in the game as well. One of the best rebounders just because of how long, lengthy his arms are. He is the closest thing we have to Dino from last year. He is what, like basically, he's basically what would have happened. Dino would have, if they'd given us a better Dino, Dino would have just been him with a better release. At number 44, we have Blake. This guy's really good on current gen. I really like his release on current gen. But he's not very good on next. He can't move on next because of his player build. He's, I mean, he's not the greatest defender in the world. Pro 2, Pro 3, though. Blake release is really good. Blake release is super good. They sped up Blake's release on normal for his pink diamond. So that meant the Blake release on very quick was even more chicken. And Blake's been good all year, man. Blake, Blake has basically had good cards for almost all the year. That Opal, or that Dark Matter Blake is one of the more underrated cards. And yeah, Blake will be an iconic card in my team, just not this one. Really not this one, but he's good. He's good. At number 43, we got Josh Smith. Jay Smooth, basically perfect stats, basically perfect badges. Has a 64 Hoffs as well. John Wall base, 82. He actually gets the better behind the back of Pro 3 Rod and Pro 1. And again, this is one of the cards where it's like, I really like his release, so I have him higher. If you don't like his release, you can find an alternative. But that's the case with almost all these cards. Like, there are alternatives you don't like to release. And number 42, this is a controversial one, but it's Rudy. So the reason why he is in here at 42, and a lot of people would have him higher, is I personally don't like him at point guard. And at the two, can you really argue that he's that much better than Terry Dishinger? Like, can you really tell me that he is that much better than this guy? Like, like he's not... He's really not that much better. Like badges wise, yeah, he's got a couple more halves. But he's really not that much better. He can play the one, which is a better secondary position. If you want to play him there, it's a better secondary position than three, which is why he's 50 spots or so, 40 spots or so higher. But I can't put Rudy any higher than 42. And number 41, we got Jonathan Isaac Dark Matter. He's just got length. He's just a slight, he's just the Opal Jonathan Isaac, but slightly better at everything. And he gets off showtime instead of no showtime. Which definitely helps. Then, at number 40, 
Apparently, I've got Mo Bamba as well. So this is a top 99. So get, put in whoever you want. Put in whoever you want, lads. For number... Uh, for number... Um, for 100 now. But uh, yeah, um, I have put Mo Bamba in at number 45 and number 40. Number 39, we got Bars Dio. Bars Dio. His player build is not quite as wide as Blake's. Which makes him good for next gen, but it's also not quite skinny, which makes him good for current gen. Pro 2, Pro 3, Gallo Base, which is one of my favorite releases of the year. He's got 95 speed, 95 salary, 95 3 bump. I mean, I remember I calculated it. If you give this guy, if you have one player on your team with floor general and one player with defensive leader, he goes up to 99 in like 80% of his stats. This is a hidden invincible, and Bars D out is insanely good. And he was like 10k MT at one stage. And number 38, we got Porzingis. So Kristaps, again, 7-3, 7-6 wingspan, 90 speed, feels like 99 on next gen, 96 three ball, 90 driving dunk, 93 lateral. He got basically every badge you need except for handles for days. And again, Kristaps, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, Brook Lopez base is a really nice one as well with that Carl Malone upper. Pro one behind the back is okay. Just a really nice card. And one spot ahead of him, this might be controversial, but I don't think it should be. I really don't think it should be to put Galaxy Opal James Wiseman in here at 37. I don't understand why people just lost all hype with this card. Like, this card is a top 15 card. No, it's not even debatable that this is a top 15 card in the game in James Wiseman. Like, that is not even debatable. He is no question about it. No question about it. Um, Top 15. And lads... Let's push him up one. I just for realized I forgot one player on the list. I just realized I forgot one player on the list. And it's GOAT LeBron James. I forgot GOAT LeBron James, lads. So let's um Let's put Opal Wiseman down to 38. I forgot GOAT LeBron James. Oh lads, that was a uh, That was a bit of a a bit of a mistake right there. Let me just say that much. Let me just say that, that much. That was a quite a quite rough mistake. So yeah, um, goat. Imagine if I forgot goat LeBron. You guys would have went absolutely crazy. So uh, now we actually have our top 100. We don't have our two Mobambas. Unreal. It worked out in the end. Cause I knew I had exactly 100 players, and I obviously just forgot to put. I obviously got rid of goat LeBron. So I think I put goat LeBron in where Invincible LeBron was, and I deleted him. Either way, that's irrelevant for the video. But, um, yeah, at number 37, we got Moses Malone. Moses Malone is insane. Like, he's an invincible with, one of the, with the best upper in the game. Like, everyone, there is not one guy that has this upper that is not a chicken man. Like, please, please tell me. Like, don't, don't try to tell me that not all of these guys were not absolutely chicken. Like, we all know how chicken, um... Money Mitch was. We all know how chicken this Moses Malone was. We all know how chicken Sidney Moncrief is in game. We all know how chicken um what's his name? Michael Cooper has been all year. Reggie Lewis. This upper is as important is like as important as having a great base on jump shot. And he is a not bad base eater. When he best shooters in the game, he's like a slightly downgraded version of the Bill Russell card. At number 36, we have got Tracy McGrady Invincible. And it's mad that we have a 99 everything Tracy McGrady. That's number 36 on the list. That just shows how many ridiculous cards 2K gave us all year. Um, but 99-3, again, 99 every stat, Trey Burke base. And then at number 35, we got point guard T-Mac. The difference is, is that I think point guard's a better secondary position than small four for Tracy McGrady. I think I think this one's better on current gen and next gen. And I do, in my opinion, I race. I rate Trey Burke base on very quick bet way better on current gen than I do on next gen. Because I actually might prefer Trey Burke release on quick. Like, of all the team acts I used on next gen, the one I've had the most success with is the is this one right here. And this is recently when I've used this card right here. It was long after this card came out. But um yeah, then at number 34, we got Thon Maker. The guy who owned who apparently had to uh, come out and tweet that he always owned an iPhone and he has never owned an Android in his life. That is a uh, that's a poor tweet because you know what, Thon? Stick by your decisions. Stick by your decisions, lads. Don't let any, do not let anyone shame you into using an Android. Don't let anyone or for using an Android. 
There is nothing wrong with using an Android. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Even if you're spent, whatever about having all the like fake Samsung phones, there's nothing wrong with that. And you know what? Especially, especially if, if nobody has ever heard of the brand of your phone, it means you're doing something right. Man, I own the OnePlus One, I own the OnePlus Two. I was a OnePlus person until OnePlus became very, quite expensive. And then you know what? I moved on to Realme. I moved on to the Realme phones. I'm always in the loop for what's the best phone to tactically downgrade on. So if whether you're getting a Samsung, whether you're getting a Realme, a Xiaomi, all I'm gonna say is, is that tactically downgrading is a way of life. And that iPhones are way too expensive. And I also believe Samsung Galaxies are way too expensive. Any, if you are spending over a thousand quid on a phone, you are, in my opinion, you are crazy. You're crazy. You can get away with a 200 quid phone. It works fine. I've been doing it. I make plenty of money off this, and I've been doing this my whole life. I've been doing this, well, since I've started getting my own money and buying my own stuff. I've been always. Tactically downgrading is a way of life, lads. We did not spend one second talking about Thon Maker. We just talked about phones, but screw it. 33, Jalen Johnson. Jalen Johnson. He is six foot nine, seven two wingspan, Michael Jordan. That's basically it. He is just invincible Michael Jordan, except he's just taller and better upper and just way better. He's just way better Michael Jordan. Jalen Johnson is ridiculously good. Then at number 32, we got Tony Kukoc. I'm surprised. I should have put Tony Kukoc's... I should have put this card somewhere in the like 60s range, I reckon. But this card right here, he's just an invincible version. He's just this guy, but better at literally everything. Um, Ray Allen base is exceptional. Um, Pro 2, Pro 3. Again, got that 99. Got 99 every stat. Every defensive badge, pretty much. We'll hit shots. D. Probably the best limited reward. And honestly, I would probably be running this guy at small forward on my team. It's... it's Yeah, I would be... If, if I had this guy, he would be my small forward. He would definitely be my small forward. He's brilliant. Then number 31, we got Luka Doncic. We got one of my favorite players in real life. A guy that I've been watching for so long. I forgot to count down, sorry. Number 31, a guy that I've been watching for so long that I literally flew over to Barcelona. I know obviously he played for Real Madrid, but his last ever game against Barcelona was in Barcelona. I flew over to Barcelona, sat courtside at his um, very last El Clasico when he still played for Real Madrid. Man, I also, how good was Luka Don or is Luka Doncic the best NBA prospect we've seen since LeBron James? I advise you guys to read some of the comments on this video. I strongly advise you guys to read some of the comments. You have 20, was I 20 at this stage? I think I may have been 20 years old at this stage. Um, this right here, this video right here. I'm telling you guys, the icon most like one of the most iconic videos I've ever made is Luka Doncic, the best prospect seen since LeBron James. One of my lowest like to dislike ratios on a video ever, ever. The only video that had a lower like to dislike ratio was uh, my video saying Carme was my video titled something like Carmelo Anthony has joined the Oklahoma City Thunder. How or something like, but there's only one basketball. But let's uh. We want to look at some some of these comments from like three to four years ago. Three to four years ago. This is this is a great read. This is a great read. Every single comment that from a non-European was like, this guy is a bust. He averages six points per game. He's trash. He averaged like 12 at that stage. Michael Porter Jr. is better than Luka Doncic. This is the most stupid sounding way I've heard of hyping an NBA prospect. Um, let's, let's have a look at Reed. Ricky Rubio's trash defense. You've never watched basketball. This guy is on drugs comparing him to LeBron James, James Harden, and many others. Sit down. Stop thinking these foreign players are going to be better than you think they are because he playing pro overseas. He probably won't be as good and won't even come over right away. Same thing about Rubio. Um, I want to... I just want to see... Um, there was a comment about... Ah, uh, screw it. Let's, let's go back on the list. But there was a literal comment about this guy where somebody goes... Somebody literally went in a... In the comment section and said that Euro League is a lower standard of high school basketball. If you want to see real basketball, you need to play AAU. Man, thank God. Thank God the attitudes of people have changed over the last few years. And this guy was that. Don Luka Doncic, Dante Exum base. It is what he is. He's just Dante Exum base. 
solid behind the back invincible card he's a little bit undersized but if you're good with x and base luka Doncic can be the best player on your team he can be the best player on your team and you can be a good good uh, have a good squad honestly so he's in at 31 at 30 we get Shaq. we get the diesel Shaq 7177 wingspan at uh, 99 speed 99 acceleration 98 three ball 99 lateral i'm um, one of my favorite releases in the game in gallo base i genuine shack upper kind of put is off putting a little bit but in my opinion this guy's way better on next gen and current gen i really like shack but even with the luca thing lads he's come he's come for the top 100 list you stay for the random the random rants i go on in the middle of videos but uh yeah then we've got number 29 and we got david robinson i really like this guy on both gens i know some guys in current gen hate him but this is again one of the releases that i know how to green on current gen because when i when i had this d rob i did play quite a bit of current gen but he's got 95 three ball 98 speed 90 acceleration half show time 99 everything he can curry on next gen d rob release is fine really good animations on both gens in my opinion and it all depends on if you like his release or not whether you're gonna like d rob or not and i i genuinely like the guy's release At number 28 we got invincible paul george so not this pg this pg i believe point guard is probably a better sec better better secondary position than small four but he can still play he still plays best at the two um six foot nine decent wingspan go release in pg is he that much better than the other paul george cam reddish no but again like the difference between 20 and 70 on his list is preference let's be real um <laughs> you can get away with them all they're all basically 99 everything with every hall of fame badge and number so that's number 28 as number 27 this is probably a bit low this is probably a bit low team usa lebron i actually kind of think he should be higher this is the one this is one of the players that i do regret because i've got like you guys know one of the pink diamonds that are still to go on this list it's ahead of him no this this lebron this lebron should be higher i made my list i'm gonna stick with number 27 this lebron should absolutely absolutely be higher lads and like again i don't even have no he he has to be higher he has yeah this is a bad this is a bad ranking spot by me i'm sorry at number 26 we've got invincible joel Embiid. we've got invincible joel Embiid. he is a little bit better than the other Embiid. he is the other Embiid, but a little bit better that's the only again the only way i can describe him. we've already been talking about joel Embiid, so this one's just Embiid, but a little bit better and number 25, starting off the top 25, is Bo Bo. Bo Bo is my favorite player still to use on my team. Like, if I'm just looking to go out there and just cook somebody, have fun, I'm, I'm using this Bo Bo. Mainly because I can't afford the other Bo Bo. But he gets the most space in the game off his side to side, curry slide. Insane wingspan, insane height. Dunks it on everybody. He's got that super skinny player build, and I don't know what it is about Bo Bo's player build. It's just better. He just moves so much faster than Porzingis. He just moves so differently. I don't know what it is. Again, stats wise and badges wise, 32 halves, which is fine. Stats wise, he does not. Badges wise, he doesn't look great. Stats wise, he doesn't even look great. 89 speed, yeah, that's 150. That's the biggest. The biggest lie in my team is that he's got 89 speed. Uh, actually, no. The biggest lie in my team is that Sim Vular has got 89 speed. But yeah, this guy is incredible. At number 24, we got another one of my favorite cards in this game. We got Ferry. We got Danny Ferry. I'm base 98 made when I go back to current gen. Like, it's the only release that I can shoot with. And he's got half shot. I mean, this guy's got every key badge on all of him. Like, is there any real badges that he does? Like, a couple of defensive badges, but he gets quite defensive animations anyway. And you put him on a small forward, rebounding doesn't matter that much. He's still got all of them on gold. 98, Rudy Upper, Pro 2, Pro 3. This guy's still incredible. Like, again, he's another one that... You guys saw on my wager from two weeks ago. There's been no real cards, good cards of note that have come out since then. You guys saw that I literally ran Danny Ferry with Danny Ferry. When you could run double fairies, I ran double fairies. That's how much I like Danny Ferry. Uh, even when I had LeBron James, um, Team USA card. I still ran double fairies. So maybe LeBron USA isn't too low because I had Ferry over him. Then at number 22, we got Invincible Giannis. We got Invincible Giannis Antetokounmpo. I'm saying number 20, sorry, no, 23, sorry, is Invincible LeBron James. We got Invincible LBJ. So Invincible LeBron is just 
10 extra Hall of Fame badges in Team USA one. And he plays small four power forward. Same difference. At number 22, we have got Invincible Giannis. We got Invincible Giannis out of the compo in a 22. Again, he's Giannis, he's Invincible. Giannis are very quick. Shifty dribble star. Pro 2, Pro 3. Every Hall of Fame badge. Incredible. And at number 21. Number 21. We got point guard, shooting guard, Giannis. I think they play basically the same in-game. Their stats are very similar. Obviously, there's more Hall of Fame badges on the other one. Range extender, yeah, it's only on goal, but I mean, it's not hard to get half range. You just need I said, 150 tokens to get half range. It's really not that difficult at this stage. Where you can just most almost every one of these cards in the auction is half half range. Again, out of position two. A good shooter, a great dribbler, good dunker, and really good on both ends. Point guard Giannis is still is still a great player to run at the point guard position. And number 20, this guy is next gen mate. He really is next gen mate. But I mean he's kind of unstoppable on next gen. Sean Bradley. Doesn't play any defense. 7675 wingspan, 235 pounds, 85 speed. Again, one of the biggest lies in 2K. 96 three ball. The only reason this guy, if I if he didn't have this weird upper 33, if he had a better upper, uh, he would be number. He'd be top seven. He would be top seven. And again, the only reason why I have him down at 20 is because, yeah, if you're a budget player, he can be he can dominate over some other guys that are higher. The problem is that we live in a world where Taco Sim Yao and Kareem are four players that play that are better than Sean Bradley. Objectively better than Sean Bradley. And there's two more that are debatable and I do believe are and can play at the small forward. Or say play at power forward. Like there are probably three guys you would play at center over Sean Bradley. For that reason, I think I have him 20, which is probably a little bit lower than most people think. But not having a secondary position is a big reason for that. At number 19. We've got one that I think is slightly better than Sean Bradley, but is way better on current gen. Way better on current gen. Invincible Chris Stamps. He's the other Chris Stamps, but slightly better. He's bull bull better on defense. That's basically what you're getting on Invincible Chris Stamps. I don't even think he's better that much better than his other Chris Stamps. If I'm going value-wise, I'm getting this Chris Stamps, but I mean, this isn't this isn't the best value list. This Chris Stamps is better. At number 18, we got Kawhi. So I probably have Kawhi's a little bit lower than most people do. If you think Kawhi is the best two guard in the game, more power to you. This guy's great. This guy's absolutely great. 6'7", seven, 7'3", seven, wingspan, Ray Allen base. He's basically Kispert with defense, which is a scary, which is a scary, scary sky, sight. Kawhi's ridiculously good. Kawhi is ridiculously good. At number 17, we got Ben Simmons. So Ben Simmons, this guy off rip is 17. If you put a whole bunch of Hall of Fame badges on him, yeah, you can argue he's higher. But I mean, like you're not, like I'm not going to judge a 60 half badge Ben Simmons, because he comes with 44. But he still has all the key ones. Insanely good on both ends. The best dunk, the best contact dunk animations in the game, bar none. Ben Simmons dunks on everybody, and it was a weird one that like I probably have Simmons lower than most other people would have Simmons. And I was the one person in 2K20 that like was an advocate for Ben Simmons over LeBron and Giannis. I was like, Ben Simmons way better dunk animations. He gets ridiculous ones. I was an ab I was like the number one advocate for Ben Simmons in 2K, um, 2K20. Problem is, is that maybe I just haven't used Ben Simmons enough, but I think there are a few guys better than him. And, but it is a close one. And number 16, we got Mobley. We got Evan Mobley. This is one of the most underrated cards in the game. Trey Burke, Carmelo Anthony base. Pro 2, Pro 3. Like, there's no, like there is nothing wrong with this card. Pro 2, Pro 3. His jumper is ridiculous. Um, He's got an insanely, insanely good jump shot. And I have just... No, I haven't missed out on someone. I haven't missed out on someone. I was about to say, I was like, if I missed out on someone, looking at my, I'm looking at my list. I do apologize um, for getting for a mistake right there. But again, Trey Burke base. And literally, he's one spot ahead of James Wiseman at 15. He's one spot ahead of James Wiseman. Only based on preference. 
Wiseman is an inch taller, same wingspan. And Wiseman does not have a hot zone top at a three-point line, which is a little bit negative. I think Steph Curry base is better off the catch than Trey Burke, but only slightly. This is a per, per or a completely preference-based, um, like based opinion. Like I prefer Wiseman to Mobley, it's probably because I've used Wiseman more. But I mean, both of these guys are incredible, and they are deserving of their spots. And number fourteen, it pains me to not put this guy in the top ten, but Hito Turkoglu. Hito's good, not exceptional on next on current gen. He's good, not exceptional. Again, not Curry sliding, it does matter for a point guard. It does matter with the way I play on current gen, it matters. And the way a lot of people play. If you're like a Ty or a Ron or a comp player, I mean, you're still you're going to be using Simmons over Hito. You're going to be using Giannis over Hito. But, I I mean, if you're if you're the average player, you probably will have more success with Hito. But 9.5 is 9 in defense overall, 6.10, base 98, 90 driving dunk, great defensive stats and badges. I still really rate Hito. I really, really rate Hito. But one thing I will say is that I've been cooked too many times by Invincible Simmons to stand by Hito greater than Invincible Simmons take I had a couple of weeks ago. I will, I no longer, no longer stand by that because I've had a few guys absolutely cook me at Ben Simmons. Um, I'm just obviously not that high on. There are a couple of guys that would have a higher than Simmons, but well, Hito, Hito is my favorite. If I'm running one on next gen, it would be Hito, but I go Simmons is probably the better card. And number 13, we got Bill Russell. This guy on both gens is incredible. Probably the best defensive guy to run a center slash power forward on next gen. Any taller than 6'10", they start to get slow. Um, he has really good animations. Got that long wingspan, big player build. He's got Ray Allen base. Really nice upper in 26. Um, he's also got Pro 2, Pro 1. Bill Russell's just incredible. He's a fantastic card. At number 12... We've got Invincible Kawhi Leonard. Most people would have him in their top 10. I have him just outside it. He's basically like a two guard version of Bill Russell. Slightly better on deep, slightly better perimeter defense. But again, it's he's not that much better than this Kawhi. But again, there's not that much difference in the price. But he is a scary good two guard. And again, you can argue him as the number one two guard in both gens. You really can. It, but there are so many elite, elite cards, lads, that are coming up in the top 10 slash 11. There is a tie for number nine. But at number 11, we got Cade. We got Cade Cunningham. So Cade Cunningham is a, he is a shooter. He's base 98. This guy is basically Hito, but he's two inches smaller with a longer wingspan. Can book can curry slide, slightly better stats wise, and is a slightly different upper. On current gen, I personally believe he's better Hito, and on next gen, I think he's worse Hito. So I think I probably should just put them one after each other. But I know more people like Cade than like Hito. And I think I'm most people, a lot of people like Cade on next gen. I think I'm the only one that thinks his upper is weird. But um, yeah, Cade belongs somewhere in and around the top 10. If you want to have him a little bit higher, that's fine. If you want him a little bit lower, that's fine. But again, base 98, my favorite release in the game. There's a reason why he's that high. And since I like base 98 that much, and number 10 is Danny Ferry. Danny Ferry, like the fact that I put the other Ferry in a 24... You, you know how, how much I'm going to like this very. They're the exact same stats-wise. He actually is the worst Dark Matter power forward in the game stats-wise, which is hilarious. He is the worst Dark Matter power forward in the game stats-wise because they gave him stats from, like, early on in the year. Like, they gave him stats from, like, the very, very start of the year. But, um, yeah, he's just... Well, not the very start of the year. They gave him stats from quite a while ago, but he's just... Fantastic. He's got base 98. Best de one of the, some of the best defensive animations in the game. Danny Ferry. Absolutely, absolutely spectacular. At number 11. So yeah, number... Oh my god, I forgot my counter. I must have clicked up. At number 9, we got a tie. And it's LeBron James. And the real question is between Goat LeBron versus Space Jam Bron. The real question between Goat LeBron and Space Jam Bron is where do you want to play LeBron and what gen you're on? If you want to play LeBron a point guard, get Goat LeBron. If you want to play LeBron a shooting guard, get Space Jam LeBron. If Le you want to play LeBron James a small forward, um, go get yourself. I would I would go Space Jam LeBron if I'm on current gen. Um, next gen I would go for Goat LeBron, but it's all preference. Like literally, get either one of them. These guys are incredible. This is why they are a tie for ninth place because there are reasons why you would uh you would go for one over the other. 
At number eight, we got Invincible Kareem. Invincible Kareem, he's the best on current gen. He's all right on next. He really is all right. As long as you're like, as long as you don't try to ISO with him on next. Now, there's a reason why I didn't like him is because like with me and centers, I just ISO with centers. That's the way I play the game a lot of the time. And he really doesn't work for that, but he's still got like Pro 2, Pro 3. Or say Pro 1, Pro 3. A pretty decent release, no steady. And only gold range, but it's quite easy to get that up to half. Especially if you're... And on current gen, for me, he's probably the better of the Kareem's on current gen. At number 8 is my starting power forward, Goat Kareem. They're basically... They play the exact same. The only difference is that one of them is steady and one of them doesn't. Like that really is the only difference between the two Kareem of Dulgebars. And also, sorry, that's on current gen, the only difference. On next gen, the reason why these aren't tied, and they are in a situation where it's like, oh, one's better on one gen, one's better on the other gen. This card has got um, Pro 2. And Pro 2 means he's he can ISO. He can side to side, he can isolate. And if you have the ability to ISO, it automatically helps on next gen. So like, there's not even a close one. This cream is so much better on next gen. But on current gen, I'd probably go for Invincible Cream. Then we have got... Oh, lads, I messed up my list again. Go Kareem is, in fact, number seven and number eight. Oh, wait, sorry. Go Kareem is... No, Kareem is eight. Go Kareem is seven. Okay, I'm I'm dumb. I'm dumb. So then we got Ben Simmons. I was about to say, I was like, there's something wrong with that. Then we got Ben Simmons Invincible at number six. I'm just messing up my counter right now. Half Showtime Ben Simmons. Um, half Range Extender. I mean, he's just slightly better version of the other Ben Simmons and he's just slightly better at everything will you notice much of a difference not really but again like if you wanted to argue the other Ben Simmons is a top 10 player I mean be my guest you can definitely argue that you can argue that Ben Simmons slash Ben Simmons are the best point guards in the game you can argue that the next best point guard after Ben Simmons is Ben Simmons and then at number five in a controversial one we got Yao Ming I love playing against Yao Ming Again, Yao Ming is spectacular. He's great. 97 speed. He can run around anybody. He's one of the best offensive players in the game, especially on current gen. Defensively, he's not the greatest on either gen. He's actually quite poor on defense on next gen. He's okay on current gen. But again, that set shot ace puts him a little bit down lower. It puts him a little bit down lower than a lot of other cards. But, I mean, Yao Ming is he's fantastic. I just think there are a couple of other guys that are a little bit better than them at his position. And number four, we got AK-47. Andre Kurilenko. This guy, 6'9", 7'4", wingspan. One of the best defensive players in the game right now. He's got a 95 three ball, 95 speed, 94 acceleration, 96 vertical, 95 three-pointer, 99 perimeter defense, 90 driving dunk. He's also got... Half Showtime, a bunch of shooting badges, half range extender, a bunch of defensive badges as well, or every defensive badge. He's basically perfect, and he's got base 98. Base 98, Pro 2, Pro 3. This guy is just like, he's basically like better two guard, better Danny Ferry, but he plays the two. And now we're on to the top three. And number three, we got Sim. For me, Sim's better than Yao, just because of that release. He also has a wider player build and has a much longer wingspan. But again, that's not that relevant. 87 speed versus Yaz 99, they feel the exact same. Lateral quickness, they, they're both equally as bad on defense, especially on next gen. Um, half show time. Yeah, he only has go quick for a step. It's quite, it doesn't cost that many tokens to get him half quick for a step. Give him half handles for days. And then he just becomes God. And he's one of the most unstoppable players in this game. He really is. Sim is almost impossible to stop running to the basket. Man, I'm getting I'm getting lazy at my counter towards the end of this video. I do apologize. I've been talking for an hour and 15 minutes. I'm kind of bound to switch off. It's It's gone. I started off at like a little bit past 10 o'clock. It's now nearly midnight. Then at number two. This might be my most controversial placing. Taco Fall. Taco Fall. Taco is the best of the Giants. He really is. He really is the best of the Giants. 95 three ball, 96 speed, 96 acceleration, 96 lateral, 99 driving dunk. Unbelievable shooter, great release on next gen. On current gen, he just runs to the basket by everyone. He's the best defensive player in the game on current gen. Not a great defensive player on next gen, but there's a reason he's not at number one. 
The reason he is not at number one is that at the center position, if you didn't get Taco Fall, you can buy Sim. You can buy for pretty cheap Bradley. They're not Taco, but I mean, they're good tactical downgrades. However, there is no tactical downgrade for Invincible Bull Bull, small forward. There is no small forward that even comes close. Danny Ferry's great, does not come close. LeBron James is great, does not come close. There is no, there are centers. Some people will argue that Yao is better than Taco. Some people will argue that Sim Vular is better than Taco. Some people might argue Bradley's better than them all. But nobody will argue, ever argue that any small forward in this game is better than Bo Bo. Because there's none of them are. He's the, one of the fastest players in the game. He's one of the best shooters in the game, especially on next gen. His pro, he's a pro two, pro three, dunks and everybody. Defense is absolutely exceptional. And Bo Bo comes in again at the number one spot. So anyway, that's the video. A couple of mistakes in my list, in my list, unfortunately. And then a, a lot of mistakes while um, going up to my top 100 while counting down in the end. But that's what happens when you're talking for an hour and 15 minutes straight. So anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, as always, thank you guys for all the support here at the year. Um, it, really, it really has been a crazy, crazy year. And hopefully 2K22 is equally as good. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.